Hi everyone, my name is Andrzej. Thank you all for joining me today. This is my first video. And thank you to everyone who already subscribed to my empty YouTube channel. And it's getting not empty. This is the first video. And uh, in this first video, which I'm going to keep uh, short, just to make sure that everything works well, because it's my first video ever. In this video, we will talk about pie chart. Let me show you Power BI. I think you already have seen it. We will create our first pie chart. Insert, in visual. I will increase it. Selecting pie chart here and adding root to the legend field and sales to the values field. And this is our first pie chart. It's very colorful. Everyone will be happy to have a chart like this in his first dashboard. It looks it looks great, colorful, like a piece of art, but it's not so good from data visualization point of view. There are some problems with this chart and this is what we are going to discuss today. I will quote Steve Wexler from his book, The Big Picture. The problem is that the pie chart does one thing well, and most people don't use it for that one thing. Specifically, pie charts are great in giving you fast and accurate estimate of part to whole relationship for two of the slices. And don't think about comparing two pie charts side by side. And I will also add don't think about uh, comparing two slices of a uh, pie chart side by side. For example, uh, let me add some names to the labels first. Um, maybe like this. Let's say we want to compare melon sales with lemon sale. They are so similar that it's really hard to understand which one is smaller, which one is uh, larger without looking at the data labels. Uh, same problem here with others and mango categories. And even it's not so easy to compare avocado and watermelon. They all look so similar. And it's not easy for us to compare an angle of this angle with this angle, or even length of this arc with length of this arc. But this is the graphical elements we use it to create this chart. And this is the only elements we have to compare on this chart. So it's not easy for us to compare parts of this chart one with another. Uh, when we have so many of them, and uh, if you, I will add a similar pie chart here. Let's say they will be a bit different, but it will be really hard to compare a slice from this chart with a slice from this chart. It's really not doesn't make sense at all. I would say. So, I will close this and go back to our pie chart. What we can do to make this chart better? First of all, we need to get rid of so many colors. Let me explain. What is the problem with all this rainbow of colors? Will you be able to recall that apple is light blue 
and avocado is darker blue in let's say 15 minutes after watching this video? I don't think so. There are too many colors. You need to, to look at the legend and go back to the chart and go back to the legend and back and forth again and again trying to understand which colors mean what and in 15-20 minutes after this video you won't be able to recall the colors anyway. There are too many of them. So let's try to make a better chart that represents the same data but in much more understandable way. We need just a few clicks to do so. We can change chart type from pie chart to bar chart. This is it. It's already much better. We can compare easily each of the fruits one with another. It's really easy for us to compare bars, for example, mango and others. We can see that mango is a little bit longer bar. So one problem solved. It's much easier to compare slices one with other, but we lost our ability to compare one slice with the whole amount. And a purpose of a pie chart is a part to whole relationship and it's lost, it's lost here. So should we go back to pie chart and use pie chart instead? No. Uh, let me switch to another quote from Colette Naplik and her storytelling with data book. If you, find, if you find yourself using a pie chart, pause and ask yourself why. If you're able to answer this question, you probably put enough thought into use of this pie chart, but it certainly shouldn't be the first type of graph that you reach for, given some difficulties in visual interpretation. And we already discussed these difficulties. It's hard to compare slices one with another. It's colors, so many colors are just misleading and not helpful. And uh, it's really hard to take anything useful from this chart. Even if we, if we need part to whole relationship, we can only compare one slice with the rest of the chart. And all these colors, they just don't help us to in this comparison. So if we have choice, a pie chart or just a simple bar chart, this bar chart will work much better. Let me show a bit improved version of the bar chart. So here I just use a color, gray color to highlight others category because it just represents different kind of data because every other bar is just for one singular fruit kind kind of fruit and other is uh, consolidated data so it's useful to highlight it with color so we are using colors much better in this chart we highlight in something important for example if you will be if you sell apples and you need just comparison with other fruit just to say, just to make some decision about your apple sales it will make sense to highlight apple here so you can see the place of the apples among other fruits on this chart so use color to highlight important things not to highlight every single category on your chart. 
Also on this uh, my implementation of bar chart, I use it as slicer that allows to switch between uh, relatives and absolute values. Just click and we can switch. We rarely will need both of them together. You either want to understand uh, understand uh, absolute values, how many lemons or melon or apples we sold, or, or you want to understand a proportion. Uh, the part to call relationship, how many apples sales took among all our sales in persons so it's about 10 persons we can see here but again i already mentioned we have a problem uh, our problem is that without these labels we don't understand part to whole relationship from this chart it's lost and in the next video i will show you how you can use other chart types to better convey part to whole relationships or how you can use a pie chart for this purpose. Again, uh, the purpose of this video was not to tell you that pie chart is a bad chart type, but uh, that the most implementation of pie chart that you can see everywhere basically and what Power BI creates with default settings for you this is not the kind of pie chart you need in your reports and on your dashboard. Uh, and I quoted Colère Naflik with her book Storytelling with Data today. So let me show you this book. I highly recommend you this book. Uh, it was the first book about data visualization uh, for me, and it really changed my understanding of how to create charts, uh, how to use colors, first of all. Uh, I think this book is the must to read for everyone who is going to create more than a few charts. Like, if you use chart in your work, read this book. And another book I want to show you. I also mentioned Steve Wexler, the big picture book today. So this is a book I want to show you and recommend. I recommend this book to also to everyone who works to use data to create visualization. As well, I recommend this book to everyone who looks at the charts and dashboard to make business decisions. You need to understand how to read the charts, what chart works well to help you to make some business decisions and what, what charts uh, are misleading and uh, can lead you into the wrong way. So I recommend to these books for, to everyone in data visualization field uh, from the developer side and from the customer side. Also, if I already talking about Steve Wexler, let me show you this book. Big book of dashboards. It's book by Steve Wexler and other authors. And this is the only book with a lot of examples of completed dashboards. There are a lot of great data visualization books that uh, teach you how to make better chart, but they all about single chart. This book is about completed dashboards that works to help you to 
understand a certain kind of data. So I highly recommend these three books to everyone who is starting his work as Power BI report developer. And data visualization is uh, much more wider than uh, Power BI. Power BI is just a tool. So if you're creating charts and dashboard uh, in any tool, I highly recommend these three books. Uh, Power BI has certain problems, uh, like I already shown you one example with default formatting settings of the pie chart. So the problem with the tool is that it's not based on the best practices of data visualization. It's just shows you by default things you shouldn't use. So every time when you're creating a chart in Power BI, I suggest you to avoid using default formatting settings. Like you create, you can create a theme for Power BI with uh, default settings to show everything in a single color. Like if you are creating a chart, create a bar chart where all bars are gray and keep it like this to the end. When you finish it formatting of everything in your chart, the last step will be to decide what you can highlight with the colors. Don't waste colors by highlighting every single category with a different color. Use color thoughtfully to highlight really important things. You can highlight an item which is the point of your interest, for example. We can highlight some uh, extremum values. You can highlight some outliers. You can highlight something else that is important in the context of your dashboard. Again, avoid using default uh, Power BI settings uh, when it assigns a different color to every category of your chart, either it's a pie chart or by bar chart. And uh, I think that's all for today. Again, it was my first video and I want to keep it short. I will be watching it again and again together with you to understand what I can do to make my next videos better. Thank you again. Uh, the next video is coming soon, so subscribe to my channel and see you again.